Hello Tangerines from Querétaro, Mexico. Tonight I'm going to be exploring Zona Centro, grabbing some dinner around here and seeing if there's anything going on for the holidays, see if there's any events or whatever. But before I do anything, I am starving so I need to get dinner right away. For dinner tonight, I'm at this nice rooftop restaurant in Central called Carranza Cincuenta. It's one of my favorite rooftop places here. Something that started since COVID is that almost every restaurant in Mexico, or at least a majority of them, you get a QR code that you scan with your phone to see the menu, and they hardly ever bring out physical menus for you anymore. Where are we going? Okay, uh, para tomar, uh, por favor, me das una naranjada mineral sin azúcar. Y para comer coliflor frita, por favor. A few videos ago, I was kind of lamenting that it's getting a little too cold here in Querétaro for me. But thankfully, that was just a cold front, and like the next week, it was much nicer. However, I came out today, I'm like, I, I put on jeans, and then I put on one of the few long sleeve shirts I have, the warmest long sleeve shirt I have. Not because I wanted to dress up, just because I didn't want to be cold. But, you know, I'm already feeling a little too cold, but thankfully I brought a sweatshirt as well. <laughs> to drink, I got something called a naranjada, and this is a drink that's just a mixture of orange juice, water, and sugar. Uh, however, to me, orange juice is sweet enough, so I don't need the added sugar. I always ask for it without sugar. Uh, this was 40 pesos, uh, and when you order one, they'll usually ask if you want mineral water or regular water. And I always go with the mineral water, it's like a sparkling water type thing, um, because the mixture of orange juice and the sparkling water is always super refreshing. For dinner, I ordered what I almost always get when I come here. It's the roasted cauliflower. It sits in a bed of tomato sauce with some spices in it. And it also has uh, Mennonite cheese and Parmesan cheese. It is so awesome. I love this dish. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is where it's at. I feel like even though it's doused in cheese, it's still pretty healthy because it's cauliflower, right? <laughs> healthy enough. And by the way, this dish was 120 pesos. Whenever you're shopping or at a restaurant in Mexico, by law, the prices must include tax, and it's a 16% value added tax. So if you get your receipt at a restaurant, or you get your bill at a restaurant, and then there's the total, and then there's tax added, make sure that the total after the tax adds up to what the menu prices would add up. Um, here, here it does, but if you just glance at it, you see that there's a breakdown. The total is 160, which is what the menu price is added up to. Uh, but then they're like, okay, 138 um, is the subtotal and then 22 pesos of tax. Uh, so they're just kind of breaking, breaking it down for you, showing how much is going to the government and how much is going to them. If you ever come here and have been drinking and need to go to the bathroom, if you're a guy, uh, make sure you go into the one that says H, not M. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> you know, after a few drinks, you, you kind of forget <laughs> that M means mujeres, not men. <laughs> oh, that was so satisfying. I love that meal. Highly recommend Carranza Cincuenta for a nice dinner. If you're liking this video so far, please subscribe to our channel because we'll have many more videos coming out about our life in Mexico. The centro of Querétaro is so pretty. Um, believe it or not, the city was founded in the 1500s. It's like 1530s or sometime around there. This plaza sure is festive. There's so many Christmas lights up. There's a Christmas tree. There's like this 2022 sign to ring in the new year. And it's pretty busy and this is a Monday night. Kind of crazy. How cute is this? It's a nativity scene made with Lele dolls. Uh, Lele dolls are like the most typical thing of Querétaro, the most typical artesanía here in this state. This festive plaza with all these Christmas lights and this Christmas tree is Plaza de Armas, uh, but right off Plaza de Armas is uh, this little, what do you call this, like a hallway? No, like a alley, alley, that's what I'm looking for. Um, but it's aligned with vendors, they're all putting out their products, their artesanías that they make. And a lot of them are indigenous people, I believe. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of cool shopping here. It's a little Christmas lele doll. Uh, ¿Cuánto cuesta? 120. 120. 
Okay, muy bien. Voy a llevar. Alright, I'm getting this uh, Christmas Lele doll and it's 120 pesos. It has a little Santa hat on and cute little ribbons. I love it. It's a pretty common belief in the U.S. that Mexico is super dangerous and if you go outside of the resort, something terrible is going to happen to you, like you're going to get mugged or killed or something. Which, like after traveling around Mexico for a few years, now seems totally ridiculous to me. And I'm walking around here in Queretaro alone at night and I have zero concern whatsoever. But I wouldn't do this in every city in Mexico. But, you know, I think like safety comes down to more of a city by city thing. And later on, I'm, I'm gonna tell you one very popular tourist place that I just would not visit right now for safety concerns. If you have someone on your Christmas shopping list that is interested in traveling to or living in Mexico, something I think they'd appreciate, I know I would appreciate it, would be a Spanish language course. Because the best investment you can make is in yourself to learn the language if you're interested in coming to Mexico. So if you'd like to check out our favorite course, you can head to tangerinespanish.com. That's our affiliate link and we'll take you right there. It's an awesome course and it's great value. So I recommend checking it out, tangerinespanish.com. But with that said, there is one very popular tourist destination in Mexico that I would just not visit right now for safety reasons. And that is Tulum. You know, uh, Maddie and I have been to Tulum a few times and we really loved it. But the last time we were there, we were thinking, you know, th this feels different. This doesn't feel as safe as it, uh, as it did before. And I don't think we're gonna come back for a while. Well, like that was in late 2020. So that was, that was over a year ago now. And just a couple days after we left there, there was like this big party going on and a couple people got shot. Uh, and then like you would hear about shootings and stuff all the time there, talking to people who live there. Uh, someone said hardly a week goes by that there's not another kidnapping. And then recently in the news, uh, there was another shooting and a couple tourists got killed. They were actually bloggers and they were killed at a restaurant that we went to every time we went there. So that, that really hit close to home. But uh, since we were there and we felt like, you know, this is getting a little too dangerous, murders are up something like 80% in the last year. Uh, so yeah, of any place in Mexico, that's one place that I personally am avoiding right now. Alaska! Hi! Hey, I have a question for you. Do you want to go for a car ride? We gotta go get mom from the airport. Okay, let's go. We gotta go. We've told you guys before in past videos, uh, that one important thing to stay safe in Mexico is to never drive at night. And like I generally think that's pretty good advice um, for for quite a few reasons. Uh, number one, there's there's a lot of potholes and problems with the roads in various parts. Um, so like you're driving at night, you don't see them as easily. Uh, so like that that's one big thing another thing is there's a lot of roads that aren't very well lit um, and at night it's just more dangerous you might you might have cattle coming out onto the road there might be cars driving without headlights without taillights things like that so not driving at night is generally good advice so why am i driving at night <laughs> well I would like to qualify the advice of don't drive at night to don't drive at night on roads that you don't know very well. I've made this drive to and from the airport many times. In fact, I feel like I've been there five times in the last month. <laughs> and I know the roads from here to there and I know they're good roads. 
Uh, it's a reasonably easy drive. When I went to the Queretaro airport for the first time, I was kind of annoyed because I'm, you drive so far out of the city and I'm like, how can they call this the Queretaro airport? This is crap. This is bull crap. Um, but then I immediately realized, oh, it's like the state of Queretaro airport. But yeah, like depending on where you're at in the city, uh, it's probably gonna be like a 30 or 40 minute drive to get to the airport. So yeah, it's kind of far out there. You uh, head like you're going towards the Pueblo Magico of Tequisquiapan and it's reasonably close to like Bernal and Tequisquiapan. Glaska, are you excited to see mom? Yeah? Do you see mom? Stay, 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 stay. Hi. Hi, Doug. Hi. Oh, Leska. Okay, why don't you put the window up so she doesn't climb out? Hi, Leska. Oh, he's a good girl. <laughs> oh, he's a good girl. Hey. Careful, there's a wild animal. Don't climb out. Don't climb out. I'll be in there in a second. <laughs> um, let's see how I can do this. I can come out and help. Thank you guys for watching. On the screen here is a playlist of all the videos we've made in Queretaro. If you'd like to learn more about this beautiful city, please subscribe to our channel. And one more thing before you go. Gong that bell so you get notified every time we release a new video and we will see you on Saturday.